Hey everybody, it's Seth and Paul for the Everything Money channel. We welcome you in. Paul, we welcome the so many new subscribers. It's been an incredible week for us. I think, uh, you know, month. the month, yeah. I mean, we were we started the month around 2,000. We were happy to get 3,000. We were gonna thank you when we hit 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And now we're well over 7,000 on to 8,000, Paul. It's been an incredible month. Why has this channel grown so much, you think? I think we provide something that uh, what we hear from people is we provide something that nobody else does on the internet on YouTube. And I'm, I'm not going to say nobody, but we provide thorough, fundamental numbers analysis of every investment that we can find. We're not just buying based on what the market's saying and what people want to hear. We sit there and say, hey, you are buying a business. If you were buying this company in full, what would you expect to get in return? Forget about the fact that it's a stock that goes up and down. You're buying a business. And that's something that speaks to a lot of people. And some people... Maybe they just didn't think about it. And all of a sudden now they're like, wait a second, that's true. I am buying a set of cash flow. What's that worth to me? Yeah, so in that regard, we have a Patreon channel and this is one of the biggest requests, whether from our patrons, Paul, on our live streams that happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we get this company over and over. And I, I said, we finally have to look at it. The company is of course, Alibaba. Uh, give me your thoughts on this company. And uh, I know you're gonna warn our viewers, go ahead. I'm gonna warn at the beginning and the end. First off, I've used Alibaba. I still use Alibaba for our company. We source a lot of materials overseas. We go through Alibaba. It's wonderful. Um, we, we've always been a big fan. Now, one thing to consider, and this is not meant to be some sort of terrible comment, but it has been shown in the past that, that sometimes companies from China have unreliable data. I'm going to assume that all the data we look at today is reliable, but I can't verify that. And that's why I avoid personally this company for right now until I can verify the data. Um, I will say that once at the beginning and once at the end, but we're going to assume from here on this video until the end that all the data is accurate and verifiable. And we can say just to be very accurate is I'm in Ohio, Akron with the snow on the ground and snowmen out front and Paul is in his Mexican mansion, which I will hey, join how you. The, how did the 10 foot snowman go? Were the boys no man felt the snowman fell, the snowman that we built fell down, Paul. But um, you and I will build one out of coconuts next week when I get down to Mexico to join you. But Paul, I will definitely not be doing that. Paul, you will too. Pull up the charts for here's Alibaba. Tell, tell us about what you see first, Paul. All right, guys. So um, Alibaba is a $600 billion company. As you can tell, uh, year to date right here, the company peaked at basically 320 back in October, and now it's down to 220. Um, did they stop trading for a couple of days or something? I have no idea, but was something, Seth, what did you see? It was something about China was regulating them or what was the, what was the news you saw that made it go down, um, 8% a couple of days in a row? Uh, it's, it said the Chinese regulators will probe the tech behemoth for suspected monopolistic behavior, Paul. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, people hate monopolies. So that's the issue right now, but we're going to go through the eight pillars. Like it's a normal company and see where it stands. How does that sound? Uh, sounds great, Paul. Yeah, so Paul brings up the eight pillars. Guys, this is a staple of our channel. This is why a lot of people come and flock to our channel. Paul analyzes companies using an eight pillar approach to analyze the health and status of a business, not just the stock price. And he'll do that right now for Alibaba. So Paul, uh, pillar number one is of course, PE ratio. What is it? So here it's a little high, it's 32. Uh, so it's an X right now for the PE ratio. But again, no single pillar determines everything or decides if you should buy or not buy. This is a little expensive according to this, but we will look into that in the future because this is a fast growing company. Pillar number two is profit margin, Paul. We want this over 10%. Big fat check, 18.6% after taxes in the last quarter. In the last year, over 20% in the last year. Pillar number three is revenue growth, Paul. We want the growth uh, revenue growing over the past five years or ever how long it's been out, right? Yep, so 15.9 billion wow. up to 73 billion. So massive check mark here. Um, five years prior to that, it was three billion. So it's it's gone up five times every five years for the last uh, two sessions. So pretty solid indeed. Pillar number four is profit growth, Paul. What about the profit? Uh, profit from three point nine billion. No, sorry, eleven point two billion to twenty one point four five. So another big fat check. Jeez. Okay, pillar number five is number of shares outstanding. We want the number of shares of stock to be going down, Paul. What are they doing? And they, we have our we have another X here, two point four six billion up to two point six three billion. So an X there, they are issuing more shares. I don't know why, in terms of exact reasons, but their stock is high, so I imagine that's part of it. Why is issuing shares bad for stockholders, Paul? 
So I always tell people this example. If there are 10 shares outstanding and you own one of them, you own 10% of the business. If all of a sudden they issue five more shares, you still own one share, but now out of 15 shares, so you now own a roughly 6.6% .6 of the company. So it's diluting you as an owner. You still own the one share, but now you own out of 15 shares instead of 10. So you're being diluted. The same, the opposite happens when they remove shares. If you owned one of 10 shares and they, they take two shares off the market by buying them back, you now still own one share, but now out of eight, which gives you 12 and a half percent ownership. So you have a bigger percentage of the ownership of the company when they buy shares back. For our OGs who've been following us for a long time, I'm certain that's repetitive. The point is you need to hear this over and over. And for our new people, you need to know when a company is issuing more shares because you might, you probably don't know at all, Paul, right? I mean, most stockholders would never even know. Right. And by the way, issuing more shares in and of itself isn't bad. However, history has shown when, they is, when companies issue shares, it's for bad reasons. But if you have a good CEO who's a good capital allocator and issuing shares to buy companies when your price is very high, then okay, I, I can agree with that to a certain level. But as we'll see with Alibaba, that might not be the case. So pillar number six, Paul, is current assets greater than current liabilities. Let's look at the charts. They have a ton, 65 billion in current assets, current liabilities of 34 billion, so check mark. And the granddaddy of them all, they have more cash on hand than total liabilities. So this is a major check mark. They have more cash on hand than all debts of the entire company combined. So that's like you have $100,000 in your bank account and your entire mortgage balance, car payments, student loans, credit cards, everything is less than 100,000. It's hard to go bankrupt when that's the case. Pillar number seven is your favorite, which is free cash flow growth. Okay, so in the last five years, Seth, are you ready for, so first off, 7.2 billion up to 19.4 billion. So definitely check mark there. And are you ready for the average? Yeah, go ahead. So do 7.2, mm -hmm. uh, 9.6, um, 14.5, 15.1. Got it. And 19.4. Got it. Tell folks what you just did right there. They always lose you on that math. Right. So I took all the cash from operations, because free cash flow is cash from operations minus your capital expenditures. And cash from operations is found on the operating cash flow statement. And in the capital expenditures, use the first line of the investing. When you subtract these two numbers out, that is your free cash flow. What is free cash flow? Free cash flow is the cash they have that they can use to pay dividends to shareholders, buy back shares, make more acquisitions, spend more on growth of the company. So guys, the average over the last five years is $13.2 billion. Now, the most common question I get, we usually multiply by this by 20. People always say, why 20? The reason being is our goal for PE is to be under 20. And over long periods of time, the earnings of a company and the free cash flow should be very similar. But the PE of 20 isn't in and of itself the right answer. Faster growing companies, you should be willing to pay a higher multiple of free cash flow and earnings because they're going to grow much faster. As you can tell here, this company has gone from 7.2 billion in free cash flow up to 19.4 with an average of 13. So it's always hard to explain, but when something is growing fast, you're not, and you take an average of, the, of a long period of time, like five years, you're not giving real good value to the most recent years. I'm assigning a lower multiple, I'm assigning a lower number to the most recent year because of an average. So I'm going to pay a higher multiple. What's the usual multiple we pay is 20, 15 to 20. Now, what am I willing to pay? Let's put it this way. I think 25 might be a reasonable multiple here maybe 30. That's the art of investing. I don't know the exact number, but let's say it's 25. You're looking at $330 billion for the company. So that would, the company's currently at 600 billion. So you sit there and say, oh man, the company has to fall in half, but wait, let me show you my trustee Excel sheet. Now I have to share this Excel sheet. What I have here guys is I created this Excel sheet and this will be available in the every, in the eight pillar stock website and app when it comes out that allow you to make assumptions on stocks. The average growth rate over the last five years is 25.6%. Average profit growth is 33%. The average profit margin is 27%. Not to get too complicated, I put it all together and figure out what the company is worth to me. Right now, the company is at 223 and I have a value of 211 to 701. And you might sit there and say, wow, it's a big range. As this number is higher and higher, the more and more it grows and the bigger the discount you take to things, I put discount rates into all of these things. 
it's going to have a bigger range. That is the art of investing. There's an, there isn't an exact number of what this thing is worth. If the, if the growth rate for the next five years is half what it was for the last five years, and the profit margin was 20% less in the last five years, the company's worth about $211 a share. So even my multiple of 25 for free cash flow might be too low already because of their growth rate being so high. So according to this, assuming all the numbers are accurate, this is a range for the price. So you might be doing pretty well if you believe the future of the next five years, the company will grow at a mid 20% growth rate, then you're probably going to do pretty well buying the company at today's prices. Those are the assumptions you have to determine you're going to make. I don't know what those are. I don't know the exact numbers. You have to decide what, what, makes, what, what feels comfortable for you. Okay, Paul. So just to recap, the PE was not very good in your mind, but not terrible around 30. We had check yeah, mark. Because, yeah, and reason being is, remember, the growth rate is so large. Look at this growth rate, 47.7%. Let's go find another company like Intel, 8.4%. I mean, it's so low compared to, in, I mean, compared to Alibaba. Let's go find a company like AT&T, 1.6%. So the faster a company is growing, that's part of the value proposal is how much are they growing to get more profit down the road? And they have a very high profit margin too, right? 27% and their gross margin is like 40 some percent. They're going to add a lot of profit to the bottom line as they grow more and more. So PE was, PE was a smidge high. Their profit margin was great. Their revenue is great. Their profit growth is great. Uh, their shares are increasing, which is not that great. Their assets over current assets over liabilities is wonderful. Their free cash flow is obviously growing. One more time, talk about that that multiple pillow number eight. We took free cash flow. We multiply by what number to get to your target price, Paul? That is the number you have to decide. The faster the growth rate of the company, the the higher the multiple you assign it. I assigned twenty five. It came out to a, was about the company falling almost in half. But as we put it in this analysis sheet, we see that the company is actually probably in a pretty decent price range according to the numbers that exist right now. So that's, again, I'm gonna repeat this over and over until the cows come home. Investing is an art. This is part of the art of determining what you're willing to pay to get future cash flows, where you think the company is going. That is a big part of it. If all of a sudden the company stopped growing and it went to 0% growth and just stayed the same, you're paying too much. If the company all of a sudden was able to grow again at 47% a year for the next five years, you're not paying enough, right? That's yeah. the whole point of everything. So the stock price for Alibaba right now, Paul, is $222. Are you a buyer at what price? I think if you're buying, if you believe the numbers, again, I'm gonna repeat about this one. I said at the end of the video, if you believe that the numbers coming out of Alibaba in China are accurate, and you believe that the future growth potential is going to be at least half of where it is today, I think you're going to be fine buying the company at today's price. I think you're going to make a good return on your money. If you like what you're hearing, guys, make sure you guys smash that like button. We really appreciate the support. We've gotten so many subscribers as we described. It's just been incredible. Paul and I are incredibly committed to this, and we're dreaming of bigger, bigger and better years, more subscribers to come. If you love what you're seeing and you want to join our Patreon, our Patreon, uh, the link is definitely in the comments below. Paul, talk about the Patreon, what people get for their money. So we're creating this website and this app to allow you to do the eight pillars on any U.S. stock, the top 3,500 U.S. stocks or so. And this was created from so many people asking me, hey, what's the, uh, what's the eight pillars of this company? I want you guys to be able to do it. And I want you guys to have the financials because right now I use Y charts, which I pay upwards of $500 a month for. I don't want you guys to pay $500 a month for it. I'm buying the data prov provider, the same one that Y charts uses. I'm providing it for you guys at a much lower price. Now, the good news is if you're a Patreon member, you get the website and app for free as long as you're a paid Patreon member. So that's the reason why I keep talking about it. I don't want you guys to be able to buy it for eight or $25 a month or hundred dollars a month and get access to me and everybody else in the chat. And then in the future, you, you say no. And then in the future, you have to pay $25 a month for the app. I want you guys to get the good deal now by investing today like I'm investing in you guys today. As always, we appreciate your support. If you are, if this if this data resonates with you, if looking at a stop comp, stock company and, and looking at the actual financials speaks to you inside, it's not going to speak to everybody, Paul, because a lot of people just like looking at the stock price. But if this the sort of nerdy math uh, it resonates with you, come join us, come join our community on the Patreon and follow our channel. As always, Paul, thanks for your expert analysis, and I will see you in Mexico on Saturday. Love you. Bye.